a few months ago, I showed you how to use ChatGPT and GitHub Copilot to help you build a couple of .NET microservices. But recently, I've been using Copilot X, which is now based on GPT-4, and specifically, I started using this service called Context Aware Conversations, and uh, I have to say that I'm very, very impressed. So today, I want to show you how I've been using Copilot X for my daily coding tasks. What I have here is a very simple .NET REST API that is meant to match two players so that they can supposedly play, uh, play a game. And let me show you how it works very quickly. Uh, all we have here is a, a match endpoint over here in our API, match endpoint with a player ID. So if I go ahead and click on send request, what you can see on the right side is that we have our first match, match ID one. We have a player one assigned there and he is waiting for an opponent, right? And so of course what we want to do now is to introduce a second player. So let's do player two and I'll hit on send request. And as you can see, we have that same match with our player one. And now we also have our player two and the match uh, has been found, right? So it was able to match it to players for a game. So that's kind of the core logic of this REST API. Uh, but let's say that I'm kind of uh, new to this API and I want to start understanding better uh, what's going on behind the scenes because perhaps I want to make some changes to it or fix something. And so let's go now and stop our server for a moment and let's close these screens. And what we want to do now is to start looking at the code. So I was told that this game matcher class over here is the one that has kind of the core logic for this service. So I want to understand what's going on here. And of course, I could go ahead and start looking at every single line in this class to understand line by line what's, what's going on here. Uh, but let's say that I'm kind of a little bit of a short on time. And so I need a little bit of help to understand this. And so, but fortunately, now I have that help. So let me show you on, on the left side, we now have this icon here. It's kind of a chat icon and that's powered by GitHub Copilot. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And so as you can see, Copilot is greeting me here. And what I can do is ask Copilot about this code base. So I'm going to say the following. What does this class do? Let's see what it, what it comes back with. So let's expand this a little bit so we can see better. This is a C-sharp class called GameMatcher that implements a GameMatcher interface, contains a list of GameMatch objects, and a method called match that takes a player parameter and returns a GameMatch object. Now, the key is here. The match method checks if there is an existing match for the given player and returns it if found. Otherwise, it creates a new match and returns it, which is exactly what our match method does. So that, that gave, gave us already a pretty good understanding of what's going on with this match method over here. And that already saves us some time uh, to understand this so we can start implementing changes, right? So that, that is pretty cool. And so let's now keep scrolling down a little bit on this class. And uh, we see that we have kind of a warning in this uh, get match for player method here. So let's see what's going on. Let's hover over there. And we're seeing that we have a possible null reference return, right? And so we should probably fix this. Now, uh, the thing is, is that, of course, I mean, find method could return null, right? And if it does, and we, if we are saying that this method returns a game match object, not a game match nullable, but just a simple game match object, the caller could have issues and it could run in the, into an object null reference exception uh, if uh, it tries to call this method uh, with the wrong uh, value. So we need to do something about it. Uh, but unfortunately, this warning here doesn't tell me exactly what to do, right? What to do in that case? Well, well, with uh, the new Copilot X, what we can do is the following. So notice this libel over here. You can click on that one and notice that it now has options uh, for Copilot, right? So now we can say fix using Copilot. I'm going to select that and Copilot is going to go ahead and try to find the best solution for this. And as you can see, it already found it. So there is kind of a question mark in there, which, which means that we're going to be converting the, the return type into a nullable game match, which will signal the caller that this could return a null. So it has to be ready for handling that, which is ex excellent. So let's go ahead and click the check over here. And now we have accepted that solution and the method is basically fixed now uh, in no time. Now, of course, we still have kind of a warning here, nullability for reference types. Uh, yeah, so this, this is because if you go back into the interface, well, the interface is not really updated for that. So let me go ahead and just put a question mark over here and that should go ahead and fix the issue for us. As you can see, no more issues and the method is going to work just fine. So that is great, but there's one other thing that, uh, that I have noticed in the past. So let me go ahead and rerun my uh, API here and let's go back into a game matcher HTTP file here. And so one thing I want to try is the following. So I'm going to hit on send request for player two. And so this is fine. So we have player two there, but let's say that for some reason, uh, our color uh, is going to now invoke that same ASP API, but with player two with capital P, right? Notice this is capital P. So I'm going to hit send request and notice that now we have this strange match uh, where we have player two match it with self, right? So for an API, it shouldn't matter if uh, if the player has a capital P or a lower P, uh, it should be really one, we really want is case insensitive uh, search here. So we should fix this, right? It shouldn't work like this. So let's uh, close this and then let's just stop the server for a moment and let's go back into the code. 
And let's see what we can do about that. So let's go all the way up here. And of course that logic is happening over here. Here we have the matches at least first of default, and then this is how we're trying to find if the player matches player one or player two. So we need to figure out a way to do this in a case insensitive way. And again, we could go back into, into the web, Stack Overflow, whatever it is, to try to find a way to, to deal with that. Or we can now ask Copilot, right? So let's just select this line over here. Let's go into Copilot on over here. So let's ask the following. How does this code deal with casing and by this code I mean the code that has been selected right I selected some code and I want to know uh, how does it deal with casing so the code that you selected does not deal with casing and is comparing two string variables using the equal separator which performs a case sensitive comparison that's kind of the problem if you want to perform a case insensitive comparison you can use the string that equals method with the string comparison or in our case option for example and here is an example of how we can do exactly that uh, which is, yeah, that, that's what we want, right? So what we can do now is just click on this button here, right? That says insert at cursor. So I will go ahead and insert the solution over there on the right side. As you can see, we have our solution in place now. And yeah, that should do it because ordinal in our case, is gonna make sure that the comparison is not case sensitive. So let's go ahead and try it out. So I'm going to start uh, again my server. Okay, and let's go back into our HTTP file and close this. And then I'll do player two with capital P now, capital P right there. So we have our match and then I'll do lower P, lower P, send request. And as you can see, and I'm clicking, <laughs> I'm clicking, uh, there is no, uh, there is no change here, right? So we still have just player two there. Uh, it is not trying to match it because we already know that player two is already in the match. So for this to match something else, I'll have to do, let's say player one, right? I'll hit send request. And now we have the match found for player one. So the case in issue has been fixed. And of course, well, one thing that I want to do here is let me just go back to the terminal. Uh, if I go back into the code base for a moment, uh, I noticed that that method is kind of, it's kind of we're doing the same thing in two places, right? So game match for player is doing that same comparison. So let me go ahead and just uh, make it so that this code here is going to go in that uh, get match for player method down here, right? And now we can go back into uh, this method here. And I'm just going to say get match for player with with player, right? So kind of a way to reuse the existing code. Okay, so that, that is fixed. But now there's, there's one more thing that's kind of bothering me here. So if we go back into, uh, let me just start this once again. If we go back into HTTP, came uh, into HTTP file and hit on send request, what you want to notice is that uh, we do have a couple of properties here. So IP address and port are uh, null, right? And that is expected because they're not supposed to have an IP address on port until we have found a game server to associate to this game match. And that's kind of another part of the logic, right? Let's say. Uh, but uh, I don't really want to have these null values in there. I'd like this result to only have the properties that actually have a value, or at least I don't want to see IP address on port until that state of the game has been, or state of the match has been reached. So how can we fix this? So let's go ahead and close this and let's stop my terminal and let's go back into our code base. In this case, what we want to do is go into get match over here. This is our entity, and those properties are defined right here. So these are the two properties, right, which are nullable, right, which is it makes sense. But how can we handle that case so that they are not returned into the JSON payload when they don't have a value? So let's go back into Copilot uh, X and let's ask the following. So how can I make it so that IP address and port are skipped if they are null in my JSON results, right? How can I do that, right? And so let's see what it says. All right, so we have an answer over here. So let's try to understand what's going on there. So you can use the JSON property attribute from the needs of the JSON namespace to specify that the IPS and port property should be skipped if their values are null. So yeah, that makes sense. So this is how you can do it. Uh, by doing that, uh, those words are not going to show up if they are null. Uh, however, you know what? I don't actually want to use Newton's of that JSON because that's kind of a thing of the past. We want to use the new thing that's included already in .NET. And so I'm going to say the following. I don't want to use newtonsoft.json. Okay, so I want to use that. I want to use the new thing. All right. So as expected, uh, if you're using the built-in system.text.json library in C Sharp, you can use a JSON ignore att attribute to skip serialization of properties with null values. And here is an example. That's exactly what I wanted, right? So notice this, uh, JSON ignore, right? This is what we want. So let me just copy this over here. Okay, copy that. So let's collapse this. And I'm going to add, oops, I'm going to add that into both IP address and a port right there. 
And so with those two, we should be able to achieve that purpose. So let's go ahead and restart the API, go back to this one over here, and let's go ahead and request player one. So I'm going to click on set request. And as you can see, we no longer have those two properties. They are gone, right? And that's because we applied the right attributes into the entities class so that they're not going to be serialized anymore if they have another value. And this time we didn't have to go to Stack Overflow to figure out the solution. Copilot was able to provide us the right solution at the right spot in our code base in no time. And that saves a lot, a lot of time. So that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, and then one more thing in this code base that we want to uh, kind of improve here, and uh, let me just stop my server for a moment, uh, is of course documentation, right? And that's one of those things that really takes me so much time. It's very time consuming. And I do like to document every single public method in my, in my classes, right? And so how do we go about that? So usually you will have to go here and start documenting one by one each of these methods, right? Uh, but now we compile it, uh, notice what you can do now. So if we go over here, what I can do is the following. So I can just do, this and notice that Copilot is already suggesting how to start documenting this class. So of course, we're going to be opening the summary tag over there. And then notice the following. Copilot is suggesting exactly what this method is going to do. So I'm going to just hit tab here to accept the suggestion. And it says creates a, creates a new match for a given player. If there is an existing match, an existing match waiting for an opponent, the player is added to that match, right? So it already knows exactly what this method is about to do, right? And then Let's go ahead and close the summary tag, right? And we can keep moving forward, right? So you, you could go ahead and suggest parameters, return times, all these things, and without me writing a single line of code. That's really amazing already. Uh, but with Copilot X, we can even do more, right? So if you go ahead and you look at this, so there's this light bulb over here. You can now click this, and you can use this option at the very bottom that says document using Copilot. So I can click on that one, and then Copilot is going to go ahead and give me the entire body of that summary uh, without me having to go line by line. Uh, and it gives me the, the, <laughs> the right documentation with parameters, with return times, and all that stuff. So if I just go down here and I accept this, accept, and if we go down over here, you can see that the entire method has been properly documented, right? And in no time. And this is one of the things that I really like to do for every single class, and it takes so much time, so it's very painful. But now, I no longer write documentation, basically. I mean, Copilot is going to be doing all of that for me. And of course, we could do the same thing for the, for the other classes, right? So I can come here and I can just say uh, document using Copilot, right? And they will, again, go ahead and provide me the right documentation for my mate. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's really awesome. Um, now, one more thing that Copilot is, is been helping me uh, in the last uh, few days, I guess, is also with a little bit with my website, right? And this is this is not going to be C sharp, right? But if you ever have a, a need to write some HTML, uh, you may run into situations where you don't know how to do some things in HTML, CSS, and stuff like that. So let me show you this. So I have this page over here, uh, which is for something I'm coming up with uh, very soon. Uh, but notice this this section down here. Right, so this one here, what I really like is to actually have it centered, right? You center in that paragraph because it doesn't make sense to have it on the left side. Uh, but um, how to do it? I I have no idea. I am not really good at CSS or HTML or anything like that. So how do I just I just want it on the center? So I know that this piece of code. So let's let me select this. Thankfully there is. So let me go back into my code over here, right? So this is the HTML for that page. So I'm going to find that section. If that section is right here. What I'd like to do is to, well, how to center this text here. So what I'm going to do is just select this div over there, and I'm going to go ahead and open up my copilot in this project now, and I'm going to ask it the following. How to center the text inside this div, right? So how do I center that stuff? So let's see what copilot comes back with. Let's see. It says, okay, you can center the text inside the div by adding the CSS property text align center to the that text container class. Here's an example right there. And so, yeah, I mean, that's that's already really awesome. It's giving me the solution right away. Uh, but I happen to be using also the Bootstrap styling framework over here. So maybe there's a way to do this uh, with Bootstrap. So let, let me ask this. How to do this, or how to do it using Bootstrap? So is there a way to do this with Bootstrap? So, yeah. Turns to be that there seems to be a way, right? So you can use Bootstrap Text Center class to center the text inside the div. And so let me see. Uh, right there, we have the updated snippet. It does have the text center thing over there. And so it looks like exactly what we want to do. So I'm going to click on the insert a cursor thingy right there. So let me collapse this, save. And then now we have our text center over there. Let me go back into my page very quickly. I'm going to refresh this. And notice that the text is indeed now centered. 
right? And it took me no time to figure out that that's the right way to do this. Uh, not, not just with HTML, but with the Bootstrap framework, right? So that, that was pretty awesome. And so that's one thing. And the other thing about this page here is that I have an image down here, this image, which is, it is just too big. It's way too big for this page. So how to make it so that it's just not that tall, right? And so let's go back into the code, right? And so I think that's going to be, let's find, get the mobile, mobile app, right? So this text over here. And so what I have is that the image is right here, right? Is the, this a PNG over here. So I want to uh, make it so that it's not that tall. Right, so I'm going to go back into Copilot because I have no idea how to do that, right? Uh, of course, many of you will know how to do this, but um, I'm not really that good at HTML. So I'm going to ask the following. I'm going to say, um, how to set a max height for this image? So how do I do this? So let's see. Uh, I would not like to actually go ahead and update my CSS. I just try to do this uh, inline just for this one image, right? How to use this for a style just in this mg tag. Okay, let's see what we get. And then, uh, I mean, that's kind of what I want, but I still I just want to use a style element, right? So how to use a style element for this? Okay, so let's see. Uh, yeah, I think this, this is what I want, right? So I want to use set a style. So I'm going to click on that. And let's see what we got on the right side. Uh, indeed, there it is, style max height to 100 px. So yeah, that's exactly what you want, right? So sometimes it will not give you exactly what you want, but you can keep asking, right? It will remember and it will keep offering you more options for, for doing what you want to do. And of course, if we go back into the page, and I'm going to refresh this. Let me go up a little bit. I mean, let me refresh this. And so, I mean, yeah. Uh, it's just too small, so let me, this I can do myself, right? So I'm going to switch this into 500 perhaps, 500 px, let me refresh, and then yeah, this is kind of a good size. It's not too big, not too small. I think that I'm going to like that. So as you can see, Copilot X is incredibly useful for your daily development tasks. It can really save you a lot of time. And if you like this video, uh, please check out the next video uh, in my channel where I'm going to cover another topic that I think you don't want to miss. So as usual, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.